Now today, or, or the other day, Matt came out with number four, which is that the documents grow curiouser and curiouser, evoking too many coincidences and a familiar scam connected to Hamilton 68 and Clint Watts, who is its founder. Um, they literally, so this is the comic book that they made. I don't know how long this is. My name is Ava Williams. Welcome to the beginning of my journey for truth. My father works at the local communications company and was ambushed in a tower he was called out to fix. His attackers were incited to violence by disinformation. They wrongly believed there's a link between and 5G and COVID-19. AI made animation? Disinformation has caused too much pain. No, so, they spent millions to make this. Problem head on. This is the chairman. He can do it we in five minutes. Time. Music round. Damn, that's sassy. Royalty free Avengers. I wanna I wanna I wanna be one of those guys. I wanna chase bad guys. Wow. Yeah, I wanna be superhero. I wanna be like the movies. So CTI file files for mm -hmm. all the devils are here. All right. Uh yeah, the hilarious. Devil. Right. <laughs> bad cookies. Wow, I feel like a patriot. Yep. In Soviet Russia, <laughs> Biden hunters you? Oh shit, that's really funny. Biden hunters you? Okay. CTI files are notable among things because the documents show a number of connections with people involved with infamous fake news episodes, in particular the Hamilton 68 dashboard purporting to track Russian 59. bots that was exposed in the Twitter files. And Matt has been more like a, like a, you know, I don't know, um, a dog with a bone with regard to Hamilton 68 and their disinformation operation, how they smeared consortium news, how they smore, smeared a lot of independent journalists and actual truth that were Meared. counter to the narrative of the people who were funding them. Hamilton 68, as a Twitter document showed, didn't actually track Russians, but a collection of ordinary accounts, mostly Western and with no connection to Russia, but they're dashboard was designed by a technologist from a company called New, Lo New Knowledge named Jonathan Morgan and fronted by a former New FBI knowledge. agent, New Knowledge, and it was fronted by, fronted by a former FBI agent and analyst named Clint Watts. And here we go into Renee DiResta. She's a Stanford Internet Observatory researcher and a leading voice in the two cross-platform content moderation programs, the Election Integrity Partnership and Virality Project. We talked about those again ah, previously. Yeah. All the Again, it's designed to make you want to zone out when you hear all this. Forget all the names. Yeah, the name is dumb. <laughs> like, what? All right. But Renee directs the, the Renee Information Duresta, Technology Center for Virality and... This is, like, they they want to make it sound benevolent and harmless. And the co-founder, like we said, Sarah yeah. Jane Terp, who we heard on that in the video, has extraordinary ties to Morgan, Watts, and the rest of. So in February yep. 2014, two employees joined an obscure Kenyan software company and open software source intelligence group called <laughs> Usahadi, U Usa, Usahidi. One where, was where, uh, you know, if you send me your social security number. No, it wasn't Nigerian. I, a royal it, prince. It, it wasn't Nigerian. It was Kenyan. Whatever. So, uh-huh. Bro, like they don't have Kenyan. Like, right. you know. But one of them was the, was the future founder of the CTI League, Sarah Jane Terp. A whistleblower who brought the CTI files documents to public where Michael Schellenberger... Gutentag, Alexander Gutentag, and my and Matt began writing stories about them last week. Another Usahidi employee in 2014 was the future CEO of New Knowledge, Jonathan Morgan. So there's the link now between SJ Terp and Jonathan Morgan. Here's the Usahidi team today, followed by the LinkedIn pages 
the two future anti-disinformation warriors. Update, a friend of Racket passed along a valuable new nugget on this front in the form of Usahidi's announcements of new hires showing Turpin Morgan arriving at the same time. She lived in New Jersey. So they literally were hired. He had been part of the community since 2010. So what do they do and who are they? We are innovators, technologists, and most importantly, advocates. Our diverse team uses our unique backgrounds mm -hmm. and skill sets to empower. Dude, this is like the, the Intel version of INN. Like, we're just, like, nobody dudes, but they literally, yeah. like, here, let's throw together Dude, a whole bunch of nobodies, close. but they're not nobodies yeah. at all. They're highly trained with specific backgrounds in specific areas, right? So yes. here Usually are the two of them showing that they were both hired and left at the same time. Hmm. That's not too suspicious yeah. now, right? New knowledge, Morgan's firm would later become famous, then infamous, then renamed, then disappear from cultural memory entirely in the wake of a series of scandals. Lacking any kind of real work history, the new company burst on the scene in 2018 after Parkland shooting. Morgan's name suddenly appeared in a New York Times story after Florida school shooting, quote, Russian bot army pounced. Again, it's the Russian. Russians don't take a dump without a plan, son. Right? So yep. they're blaming the Russians. Introduced by the Times as the chief executive of New Knowledge, a company that tracks online disinformation campaigns, the paper added that he was, quote, one of the researchers who worked with the German Marshall Fund to create Hamilton 68, the website that monitors Russian bot and fake Twitter activity, which we know it doesn't. Oh, those Russians. Oh, man. Um, again, Hamilton 68 is a dashboard that purported to track Russian online influence campaigns was the sole source for the Times report that Russians were trying to widen the divide and make compromise even more difficult by highlighting hashtags like hashtag <clears throat> parkland shooting and even hashtag gun control now. Come on, man. Yep. They're going to take my guns. Yep. Morgan, after the Parkland shooting, was also interviewed by Chuck Toad, or, or Chode Todd, on MSNBC, who threw up his hands at the news that Russians were meddling with American discourse. Whatever these companies are doing, it doesn't work, Todd said. What's happening here? Thoughts of softball, Morgan argued, social media platforms hadn't solved the systemic problem of disinformation. Wow, it looks like Jackson Hank. No. I'm not going to play that. It's MSNBC. It's corporate media. We don't play that nonsense here. <laughs> All right. Not long after in August 2018, New Knowledge announced the receipt of $11 million in startup capital to protect companies from covert coordinated disinformation campaigns. Investors included funds right. with military contracting ties. Go figure. Including GGV Capital, Lux Capital, and Moonshot Capital. With VentureBeat pointing out that what further distinguishes new knowledge is that its founders are AI and homeland security experts who grew up in the NSA. Morgan, for instance, was an advisor for the U.S. State Department. Nobody questions whether those guys might be spies. Nobody questions whether no. those guys might be applying any type of an operation domestically. Nope. Well... According to this, less than half a year from its initial announcement, New Knowledge, after laboring for months, produced a much heralded report for the Senate Intelligence Committee called, quote, the tactics and tropes of the Internet Research Agency. Again, we know all about that. That is the hysteria Russian organization that was uh, overhyped about the Russiagate stuff and that put out the information about the 2016 election. Turns out they bought $50,000 in Facebook ads. They, te they 
detailed yep. a propaganda war against U.S. citizens by Russia, as, of course, NPR, the biggest dupes in the history of the world, put it. The report mm -hmm. produced... And Bernie Sanders parroted it. Everyone in that in, in that sphere, Not yes. Himself. Yep, he Russiagated himself. Like, but the report produced an outpouring of ecstatic so we, headlines so and, TV, and TV reports with Politico saying that it showed a sweeping effort to show to sow divisions, support Trump on the part of, of course, Putin, right? The Washington Post noting that Russia had not only tried to help Trump, but targeted the saintly Robert Mueller. The Wall Street Journal noting Russia targeted black voters and so on and so on. Complete, Let me call the Russians to help. Complete, yeah. Complete fabrications here and spinning and also their own brand of misinformation. To get a sense of how promiscuously the new knowledge report was spread, watch this condensed clip of a mortified Mika Berezinski's rattling off report conclusions, then tossing Pinkers to Evers Ch Chance style a parade of MSNBC contactor, uh, commentators, which I don't want to talk about. But this one hands off to this one, to this one. Then later, it's this one. And finally, old sad sack Boston bar crawler Mike Barnacle mouthing the required pieties about Trump working hand in glove with what Vladimir Putin has set out to do. Again, the source Ew. for this is all analysts hired by the Senate Intelligence Committee, chief among them, new knowledge. Huh, how about that? And I will not play MSNBC. How about that? How about that? By the way, this was at 3 in the morning, but it's 6 in the morning. So you got to get up early to watch this garbage. Mere days after this orgy. <laughs> nice, Matt. I love it. How about new? Thanks. News came out that new knowledge was now involved with a fake news scheme in which fictional Russian social media accounts were made to follow Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore after which reporters were alerted to the connection. This is very similar to you what... You are fake news. Yes, it's, it's, they're manufacturing fake news. They're literally creating a narrative, feeding it to people, saying it's a narrative, and getting everyone to believe it while knowing the entire time that it was just made up and bullshit. In an extraordinary yep. display of shamelessness, Times writer Jim Ruttenberg, the author of the influential 2016 article, quote, Trump is testing the norms of objectivity in journalism, in which it was argued that reporters faced with the Trump threat needed to be more worried about being true to history's judgment than mere truth, described the Alabama incident as an unfortunate development that the Russian government had way too much fun with. Allowing them to claim the mm -hmm. incident seems to cast the Democrats' Russiagate accusations into further doubt. No shit. Yep. Ruttenberg incredibly then quoted Brett Schaefer of the Alliance for Security Democracy as saying the development was awful for democracy, despite the fact that Schaefer and the ASD had a direct tie to Morgan and New Knowledge. Morgan and New Knowledge helped design Hamilton 68, which the ASD funded and probably got their information yep. from, their talking points from. Even the Soviets didn't write things this dumb. The funder of one fake news organization said the discovery of another fake news operation was sad news, our very serious sources say. Fake news. Trolling. It's called we do a little trolling. Fake news outing fake news to, dis to declare themselves as legitimate. Literally, that's what they did. They burned one of their flags yeah. to say, okay. We're legit because we outed this one, but they actually were the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ruttenberg also noted that parenthetically... Well, well, double fake. Right, that new knowledge also helped well, write a report on Russian troll activity released last month by the Senate Intelligence Committee, omitting the important end clause, mm -hmm. a report we at the Times hyped the living fuck out of. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh-huh. Right. The bullshit that it is, right? The Twitter files uncovered the Hamilton 68 was a fraud as well. According to internal Twitter correspondence, Morgan's dashboard 
was not tracking Russian propaganda and Russian disinformation, though they thought they were, and they said they were, but they were actually tracking a group of 600-odd accounts overwhelmingly composed of ordinary people in places like the U.S., Canada, and Britain. I think we just need to call this out on the bullshit that it is, said our friend Yoel Roth. You can come out of hiding now, Yoel. Nobody's going to get you. Well, maybe somebody, but not me. I don't want... Uh, I got you. You're in hiding. While the Hamilton dashboard was designed by Morgan, with some help from the Global Engagement Center contractor, J.M. Berger, so there's that GEC coming into play again, right? Yep. The front man of the operation was Clint Watts, who was and remains an MSNBC contributor. And let's let's watch. I, I hope we don't get taken down for this, but Orf did an incredible job of this one. Uh, you and your team, you guys created a website. Hamilton 68. Yes, yeah, my colleagues and I, we tracked Russian accounts. That's some bullshit. So they're literally right now, they're Russian bots, according to your website, that are putting this out into the world. Is that right. correct? That's bullshit. <laughs> yep. Orf. Indie Media Award honoree. Uh, I got that button. Classic 2023. Funny. Yes, the Nomster. I saw that today about switching the N and the M characters on the laptop as a practical joke. She's a Nomster, a real Nomster. Yes, that's very funny. 279 mm -hmm. times the impact of Hamilton on the domestic news landscape almost can't be calculated. It was used to make assertions about Russian interest in everything from a memo about FISA abuse written by Republican Devin Nunes. Ooh, how's that cow doing? To the Parkland shooting, to the spread of the term deep state, to the hashtag walk away movement. And by the way, if you haven't walked away from the Democrats, hashtag walk away, to countless other themes. And it was all a lie, as again, re re recorded 279 lies. And I think we played this once before, but it's so good. We got to play this one again. This is the only time I'll play corporate media is when Orf does this. McCarthy publicly oh, charges that the United Wait, States is one. invested with foreign forces at work in our politics. And he says that he has a list of 600 Twitter accounts that appear to be linked to the Russian government. That's a lie. These Kremlin-linked accounts. These Kremlin-linked accounts. These Kremlin-linked accounts. Russian-linked accounts. Kremlin-linked accounts. Kremlin accounts. Foreign influence. Kremlin-oriented Twitter accounts. Kremlin-linked Twitter accounts. Russian-linked Twitter accounts. Impersonating Americans. They are every day playing on social media. There's a website called Hamilton 68 that measures it. This Russian influence tracker on Twitter. The Russian dashboard it's a real-time dashboard of all right you get the point orf is amazing yep but one of the bizarre things we discovered when researching the people involved in hamilton 68 was a video graphic novel series authored by watts and both funded and produced this is not a joke by the dhs's cisa that's chris krebs's remember his profile pic we paid for that mm -hmm. The Resilience series featured full-scale animated features with plots whose sheer paranoia levels make Reefer Madness seem like when Harry met Sally. In the clip below, a young woman who has a father bearing a, sim a remarkable resemblance to Clint Watts sees her old man ambushed by attackers who've been incited to violence by disinformation, believing there's a link between 5G and COVID-19. We saw that at the top of the post as will be clear in a moment the 5g tail was a major fixation of ctil which seemed to think the whole world was in its thrall the one stop five v globa facebook page had a whole 82 shares at the time of this analysis through tears the daughter propaganda the daughter protagonist in the resilience decides to stand up to disinformation scourge and fight back in a bizarre, in as bizarre a scene as you'll ever see anywhere in any film or video ever produced, our heroine reports mm -hmm. to a chairman of indeterminate species, a sort of metallic wolf, who maybe represents someone like former Time editor and GEC chief Rick Stengel, or maybe Laura Rosenberger of the Alliance for Security De Securing Democracy. The chairman warns her, "We don't have much time." Where's the, 
It's so crazy, yeah. My father works at the local communications company Again. and was ambushed at a tower. In case you missed it before. Six. His attackers were incited to violence by disinformation. They wrongly believe yeah. that there's a link between 5G and COVID-19. Dude, these animations are so AI, I swear. Disinformation has too much pain. The same so, ones you saw last time. I'm taking the problem. It's a terrible animation. This is the chairman. This. We don't yeah, have much time. My phone. Wait. Yeah, it's the same video we saw a second ago. Right, but but, but it's the voice. It's a. This is the chairman. We don't have much time. Wait. Who? Who's right. the chairman? That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, Clint Watts is all over the CTI files. Not only are there links to a page with the first draft version of the Resilience series. There are numerous references to the Clint Watts Matrix, another taxon taxonomic, taxonomic threat charting graph, which are described and commented upon by other anti disinformation and disinformationists. Yes, mock informationists. Yep. Okay. On one hand, it's important to remember that these charts are supposed to map what the bad guys do. So entries like shit list, add target accounts to insultingly named lists. <laughs> I do that. Uh, or ad hominem, make insults and accusations. I certainly do that. Should not be understood as instructions. But it's also true, however, that CTIL members are on video saying things like, Basically, we're using many of the same techniques as the bad guys. So that should be taken into consideration, too. And here's that resilience series. Here's the, the outline and the sketch for what they want to accomplish. Right? Holy crap. Ask GoFundMe to investigate. Here's another one. Hmm, Canadian truckers. Just to an example, CTIL incident reports and instructional papers regularly list possible counters to disfavored themes. In the paraphrase below, for example, uh, CTIL, member, CTIL members are warned about examples of the terrifying 5G conspiracy. And we can ask GoFundMe to investigate and ask Facebook to go after the original are listed as possible solutions for what to do. Right? Uh, Nottingham, UK... Shares that include Real News Australia, Not Nottingham, UK, various 5G conspiracy peeps. This makes me think that our work tracking COVID 5G will be useful after all. Because they think there's overlap. Uh huh? Sniff Hamilton 68 dashboard for themes. What does that mean? CTIL docs also repeatedly refer members to Ham 68. Ham 68. They, they already short named it, nicknamed it as a source and even suggest they sniff it for themes. So now, which is odd given this, given, okay. given that CTIO was supposedly about COVID and not Russians, why are they skimming that database? Right? Phone honeypots, sniffing Hamilton 68 for this info data flows, which might or might not include Propaganda. Uh huh. I would go with might. Live feed from accounts accountable attributable to Russia or China may or may not contain propaganda useful for seeing current themes. So they're all they're definitely trying to insinuate it. Here's another yeah. one where they talk about the Parkland teens. A number of incident reports sourced to Hamilton 68, sometimes by way of popular media. The Parkland Teens report below takes text from a Vanity Fair story, right, about how they're using, how bo Russian bots are using 2016 tactics to hijack the gun debate on Twitter. One of the odder details about these three episodes is that the counters to Hamilton 68 stories for some strange reason, don't recommend takedowns or removals. The tone is diagnostic. Presumed goals divide the American public on issues of guns, race, and generational politics and activism. Method is amplification via sock puppet and cyborg accounts, but the counters are none. 
They get media exposure. That's what all yep. this has written in. In another report titled Kavanaugh, source to Hamilton 68. So, of course, they now are saying that the Russians were United. involved in um, influencing whether Kavanaugh, you know, the Kavanaugh hearings and whether he got, you know, whether he passes as Supreme Court justice and what shape yep. potential narrative and public thinking. That Morgan, right, that this time to a, a quartz piece that tags S.J. Terps, long ago co-worker Jonathan Morgan, again, the head of that new, new, whatever, new me, um, new knowledge, new knowledge, right? Right. Morgan is currently tracking a set of around a thousand accounts he believes are tied to Russia, says the Kavanaugh hearings have unleashed more domestic, U.S. domestic focused propaganda from foreign linked networks than his firm has seen in months. Okay. The analysis includes lines like presumed goals, divide the American public on gender and party lines, harass and intimidate anti-Trump voices, and promote both sides relativism and alter ground truth resources such as Wikipedia. So again, ground truth resources. Well, wait a minute. What this okay. is saying is they should be that their agents and their operatives are editing Wikipedia to spread misinformation intentionally. Yes. And I right? guarantee you community notes because that's a similar system. Like. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And now even Elon is like, huh, it looks like the, there's, there's somebody that's some intelligence service. I wonder where that's now manipulating and got, got some kind of an influence over community notes. Notes. Where'd that come from? Yeah. And then got community noted again, being like, no community notes is good. But they don't want to counter it because they're getting media exposure. That's the counter, is that they'll let the media counter it and form the narrative. And there they are. That, yep. that, that's from this stuff. Online Twitter accounts tied to Russia are heavily involved in discussing Supreme Court nominee and allegations against him online. Here they talk about Hamilton 68, listed Kavanaugh, Trump, the FBI, and Christine Blasey Ford as the four top topics mentioned by Russia-linked accounts on the evening of October 1st. Guess what the four top topics linked by non-Russia linked accounts would be? My guess it would be um, Kavanaugh, Trump, the FBI, and Ford. Yep. The Russia linked accounts are largely lending their support to Kavanaugh, says Morgan. The company that built the software, Hamilton 68, that Clint Watts now operates and is the face of. You're going to say that every time, yeah. I know. So... I didn't say it every time. It's important. it's important to remember that the main precursor organization to CTIL, which is Miss InfoSec, which was also run by that SJ lady, included none other than Twitter file star Renee DeResta of the Stanford Internet Observatory EIP and Virality Project fame. DeResta, crucially, was also the research director at Jonathan Morgan's New Knowledge when it was cranking out informational bogosity like Project Alabama and Hamilton 68. So the queen of bullshit is Renee DeResta. In a Medium report about yep. an early MissInfoSec working group meeting, she's quoted saying something that had to be a delight to contractors' ears. Quote, this information is not a problem that can be solved. It's like a chronic disease that can be managed. Gross. <laughs> Oh. Also starring Clint Watts. Miss InfoSec also cited the research of Clint Watts from Hamilton 68, who said, quote, the goal is to take an approach that will anticipate changes in threat behavior and proactively disrupt nefarious activity rather than reactively respond to it. Basically okay. stirring shit up, causing a problem, and then dealing with the results because we we orchestrated the whole thing so we know exactly how it's going to go down and we can steer it in the direction that we want. Wow. We're almost done. There's only 20 points to this. Because I know we got to get the boats in a few. We're going to be a few minutes late for boats, but this is important. The original discuss 
discussion about this in an early podcast interview the future drivers of CTIL, SJ Terp, and Pablo Brewer talk about funding. Mm, follow the money. The original discussion about this, Brewer says, was funded by the Donovan Group, which is a firm tied to the DOD Special Operations Command. Craig Newmark. We did get a what little bit of money fucking names? from Craig Newmark, who has the Bye. Newmark Foundation for MisInfoSec Working Group. Mm -hmm. Looking for soft works. In sum, the gang's <laughs> all here. The principals from New Knowledge, Morgan and Deresta, along with the Alliance for Securing Democracy, which is Watts, all key figures from Hamilton 68, all also have ties to TERP, CTIL, and MisInfoSec, operations which openly embrace the idea of preemptive, left of boom, informational strike yammering repeatedly about psyops and the need to proactively interrupt speech that is not desired. Maybe mm -hmm. it's chance that the authors of high-tech fakes like Hamilton 68 just happen to cross-pollinate over and over with this DHS-endorsed program. It's early days and we're still spotting these connections, but sometimes when a surplus of coincidence looks wrong, it is. More to come. Yep. So now... What Matt then says is that over the course of the Twitter files, many of us who worked on the project got used to the social media thread format as a convenient, speedy way to deliver document-based reports. Now that I'm joining public to report on the CTI files, he's not joining public in permanently just for this, uh, I still believe that the thread is a good format, or at least a good format, for delivering documents to the public expeditiously and in bulk. However, I got a problem. Twitter and fucking Elmo Musk are sadly stepping on Substack sites like his own to such an extreme degree that it's actually counterproductive to post there. I disagree Which with that. Speech is boring and paranoid. Yeah, coming to a Substack near you, I know. Coming to a Substack <laughs> newsletter near you. He says, even when I don't post links to Substack, as was the case with the initial hashtag CTI files posts put out last week, the material scarcely circulates, suggesting I continue to be denialisted on that site. Yep. Because of all this, I've decided to do threads here directly on Substack. I'll still announce them on Twitter, X, in addition to notes, Facebook, and Instagram, but there no longer seems to be any point in swimming upstream on platforms where I'm suppressed. I want everybody to hear that. There's no point to swimming upstream on platforms where we are being suppressed. I'm not doing this out of peak or to throw anything in Elon's face. It's already clear that that approach doesn't accomplish anything. He's tried it. But it's just a concession to, just as a concession to reality. I don't want to do it either. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of Substack contributors and other independents in similar situations, I need to find new ways to get the word out as the era of one-stop marketing on Twitter X is over. Again, let me repeat that for the, for the everyone. The era of one-stop marketing on Twitter X is over. The new formula will be threads on this site, followed by explanatory live streams, and Matt started to do streams. This thread being free material, social media users are free to repost, but I'd appreciate a link somewhere in the thread without further ado. And that's this was at the top initially, and he moved it down to the bottom. Really mm. important stuff. Um, like Whitney said, it's a lot of what we already knew, but it's confirmation of what we knew, and it's exposing the links <clears throat> between all the people that are connected to it and why they're so dangerous and how they got the access they did. And it it, it tells the story. It doesn't warn you of anything that's potentially coming. But it looks back and really gives you a picture of how did, all, how did this all come together so that we could potentially see warning signs of that coming together similarly in the future. That's my hope. Mm. Um, okay. 